We are all in this together. And we all have a part to play to keep our island COVID free. Play your part and stay safe and healthy. Our bottles will soon be reopened. Get ready. So what are you doing to keep saying it's COVID free? Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high-touch areas regularly. Dividers or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. Therefore, self-health management is an important step in this process. Self-health management refers to the measures people take to manage their own health. You and I should remember to wash hands often with soap and water, or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose. Take your temperature morning and evening. Watch for symptoms. Persons with diabetes or hypertension are reminded to take your medication regularly as prescribed. If you have no symptoms, you may carry out your normal routine and boost your immune system. When you are outside, avoid public spaces and wear a mask at all times. If you develop symptoms, put on a mask and seek medical care. Do not take public transportation. Inform the doctor of your travel history, any contact with confirmed or suspected cases, your occupation, and whether anyone around you has similar symptoms. If you become ill, please rest at home. Wear a mask and isolate yourself from others in your household. If you share a bathroom, disinfect daily using one part bleach to 10 parts water. Everyone must work together to reduce the spread of the coronavirus when our border has been opened. My name is
is Carla Astefan and I have been a potter for over 20 years. I know it's a very difficult time for all of us in the industry, but this time has given me the opportunity to really rethink the whole operation. It's given me time to do other things, to do my pottery. I'm trying to stockpile on my work. To my brothers and sisters in the tourism industry, this is a time to look towards the future. This is a time to examine what you have been doing, see what new things you can do, how you can diversify, how you can innovate, plan ahead. So with proper planning, we will all be prosperous in the future. As we get ready to serve, it is important that we improve our vehicles to ensure the safety of our guests and ourselves. Outfit your vehicle with appropriate dividers to separate driver from passenger. Plexiglass or Velcro plastic divider may be used. Have a minimum of two hand sanitizers, one for you and one for your guests. Always carry extra mask and disinfectant in your vehicle and post signs to remind passengers to use hand sanitizers and wear their masks and follow social distancing protocols. When providing a service, it is important that the hands of the passengers are sanitized before entering the vehicle. Remember, a mask must always be worn by all occupants of the vehicle for the duration of the trip. At the end of the trip, Remember to wish your passengers a good day. Ensure they have left no personal items behind and sanitize their hands. Once you have completed your trip, remember to sanitize your hands and your vehicle. Seats must be disinfected and all high touch areas, such as doors and seat handles, must be sanitized before your next trip. Let's do all we can to keep ourselves and our visitors safe. PM, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis closed its borders to all commercial airline flights. Seven months later, only 19 coronavirus cases have been confirmed in the Federation and they have all resulted in full recoveries and therefore no deaths. The Federation's borders are scheduled to reopen this coming Saturday, October 31st, 2020. Importantly, there will be health and travel related entry requirements aimed at reopening safely with minimal risk of reintroducing the coronavirus into our society. Joining Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris tonight to discuss all of this are Minister of Tourism, Transport and Ports, the Honorable Lindsey Grant, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws, and the Chief Immigration Officer, Ms. Merslin Hughes. The Chief Medical Officer heads up the Health Emergency Operations Center, also called the HEOC, and the Chief Immigration Officer heads up the COVID-19 Compliance and Enforcement Task Force commissioned by the National Emergency Operations Center, also called the NEOC. There is much to discuss tonight, so I now invite the Chief Medical Officer to present her opening remarks. Thank you, Valencia, and a pleasant good evening to everyone. In St. Kitts and Nevis, to date, we have reported 19 confirmed cases of COVID-19 so far, and all 19 have recovered. The Centers for Disease Control, or the CDC, designated St. Kitts and Nevis as a destination with a very low risk of COVID-19 transmission. 
The COVID-19 situation in the Federation is stable and we need to remain ahead of this virus. Despite this, last week saw the highest number of COVID-19 cases reported globally so far. Over 43 million persons have been diagnosed with this disease and over 1.15 million have died. In the Caribbean, over 266,000 cases have been reported with over 158,000 recoveries and over 4,000 deaths. The mental and psychological impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is significant. Many are still working from home. Some children are still attending virtual classes. Some are not able to share milestones with loved ones. And some family members are not able to mourn the loss of loved ones as they should. As for the healthcare workers, we are still on the front line and our lives have not been normal for some nine months now. However, we must continue to do our part in preventing and containing the spread of this highly contagious virus. Tourism is the main economic driver for the Federation. Our borders were closed to international travel in March of this year, and our borders will reopen this coming Saturday as Valencia just highlighted. Our borders will be reopened to international travelers and tourists. Our aim is to reopen safely with minimum risk of reintroduction of the virus to the Federation. Please note that the COVID-19 outbreak is worsening in our source markets with over 8 million confirmed cases in the United States over 875,000 cases in the UK, and over 220,000 cases in Canada. Based on this fact, we have confirmed a robust set of protocols to ensure safety of the frontline workers in the hotel and tourism sector, and the safety of our people on a whole. We must all do our part for this to be successful. So my task tonight is to provide you an overview of the health and travel protocols and to provide you an update as to our level of preparedness for the weekend. By way of background, three weeks ago, we would have shared our intent to participate in the Caribbean bubble, which includes eight Caribbean member states, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Over the past 14 days, that is between October the 12th and present, St. Lucia reported 25 confirmed cases with a total of 54. Barbados reported 25 confirmed cases, bringing its total to 233. Antigua and Barbuda reported 13 cases, bringing its total to 124. The Ministry of Health and the HEOC, the Health Emergency Operating Center Committee, is continuously monitoring the situation in these territories and looking out for evidence of community transmission of COVID-19. We are in the process of evaluating the risk of participating in the Caribbean bubble. So now let's look at the health and travel protocols that comes into effect on October the 31st. Well, all inbound travelers to the Federation will fall into one of two categories. One, you're either coming from the Caribbean bubble or you're coming from a territory outside of the Caribbean bubble. So let's look at what pertains to those coming in to the Federation from one of the Caribbean bubble territories. So if you have been residing in one of the Caribbean bubble territories for at least 21 days, and once you would have uh, 
taken a PCR test within 72 hours of boarding the plane to St. Kitts and once that test is negative and you would have landed at our airport, you will be subjected to screening at the airport. And so there are a focused history, medical history will be taken, uh, your temperature will be taken and if asymptomatic you will be allowed to integrate into the Federation without a period of confinement or quarantine. If you are coming from a Caribbean bubble territory, you are free to stay at a private residence with a friend or a relative, or you can stay at one of the COVID-19 certified non-branded hotels like Sugar Bay, Timothy Beach, Golden Rock Inn, Mount Pelia, Nisbet Plantation, Hermitage, Mount Nevis, the Hamilton, and the Pinnis Beach Hotel. If you are returning national, let's say you are returning national coming in from the United Kingdom or New York or Miami, you are required to submit a negative PCR test which should have been done or taken within three days of travel to the Federation. And we recommend that you take this test at an accredited laboratory. Nationals returning from within the Caribbean bubble, and if you, are, if you intend to stay in St. Kitts, you can stay at a private residence or at one of the non-branded hotels. If you are a national returning from outside the Caribbean bubble, New York, Miami, United Kingdom, you are free to stay at the following locations. You can stay at Oali Beach Resort in Nevis, Potworks in Nevis. You can also stay at the Paradise Beach in Nevis. You can stay at the Ocean Terrace Inn or the Royal St. Kitts Hotel in St. Kitts or either of the four franchise hotels, namely Four Seasons Resort, St. Kitts Marriott, St. Kitts Marriott St. Kitts Vacation Beach Club, Park Hyatt and the Koi Resort. Rener returning nationals and residents may also opt for pre-approved quarantine and you will be asked to pay for the security facility and the attendant security fees. Interested returning nationals or residents may access the pre-approved option by visiting the website www.covid19.gov.kn www.covid19.gov.kn What are the entry requirements for tourists or international travelers? If you are a tourist, you'll be required to complete the entry form and submit a negative PCR test taken at a, an accredited lab within three days of travel. The inbound international tourist or traveler must submit confirmation of hotel reservation at either of the following hotels, the Park Hyatt, the Four Seasons, St. Kitts Marriott, Marriott St. Kitts Vacation Beach Club, Royal St. Kitts Hotel, Koi Resort, or the Paradise Beach Nevis. The traveler will be required to undergo health screening at our airports and will be asked to download and install the St. Kitts Nevis COVID-19 mobile app. If the tourist is without symptoms, he or she will be allowed entry into the Federation. The inbound traveler or tourist will be vacationing in place at their hotel with access to an approved package of services for the first 14 days or for the duration of stay if shorter. The international tourist will be required to do serial testing. He or she will be tested on day 7 and on day 14. When tested on day 7, if the traveler receives a negative PCR test, he or she can be allowed 
through the hotel's concierge or tour desk to access COVID-19 approved tourist attraction sites on the island in a secure bubble. All international travelers and tourists would be tested on day 14 if their stay or vacation uh, allows for that. And once the result is negative, the traveler or tourist will be allowed to integrate into our society. So that provides you an overview of the entry uh, requirements for persons coming into the Federation uh, from territories within the Caribbean bubble for our returning nationals and for tourists. So now what's just a, by, I, I just want to provide you an update regarding the status of plans for the reopening of our borders. The Ministry of Tourism, St. Kitts Tourism Authority and the Nevis Tourism Authority and the members of the National COVID-19 Task Force would have conducted a series of stakeholder meetings with the management of the hotels. We would have conducted a series of site visits to all of the above mentioned hotels to evaluate and assess the protocols and the package of services that will be offered to the high-risk tourists. The goal is to offer these services with minimum risk of transmission of the virus within these hotel properties. In essence, these hotels are ready for our reopening. I want to inform you that the St. Kitts and Nevis Health mobile application is also ready and our airport, the RLB International Airport, will be ready by October 31st. Ladies and gentlemen, we are doing our part to reopen our borders safely. However, please note that we all have a role to play in the safe reopening of our borders. As individuals, we have a responsibility to prevent the spread of the virus by adhering to the measures we have now gotten used to. And these include the wearing of the face mask, hand hygiene, sanitation, making sure those high touch areas are clean, physical distancing, ensuring that we maintain a physical distance of at least 3.3 feet from others when in public spaces and social distancing, avoiding mass gatherings. Let us continue to follow the science and work together to prevent a second lockdown. Let us continue to work together to fight the COVID-19 virus and rebuild our economy. Hashtag together we can. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Medical Officer, for such an informative and comprehensive presentation. I now turn to the Chief Immigration Officer, Ms. Merslin Hughes, to present her opening remarks. Thank you, Village Sarah, and thank you to the Prime Minister for inviting me to be a part of this important discussion as we discuss the reopening of our borders on Saturday the 31st of October 2020. As Dr. Laws would have said, our borders were officially closed to commercial traffic on the 25th of March 2020. During that period, we, um, we went into full shutdown and then eventually we started to receive our nationals who wanted to repatriate to back, to back home and we saw between March 26th and October 27th, we saw a total of 1,052 passengers arriving back home. We saw a total of 797 who would have left for their homes. Quite a large number of them were from the medical school, Ross University, and in the 1050 that returned also, quite a number of students um, who came back for, to attend our school. There are some 
new requirements for passengers arriving at the RLB International Airport. There would be some overlapping because Dr. Laws would have covered quite a lot, quite a bit of what I would have to share this evening. And it is a, a way of reinforcing that we are now in what is considered a new norm. And so we want persons to, to understand and to adhere to the new protocols once they are coming into or departing our federation. So all travelers to St. Kitts and Nevis must complete a pre-arrival online immigration custom form at least 24 hours before arrival. The online form will also include personal health information, which includes evidence of a negative COVID-19 PCR test done within 72 hours or three days of travel. The online immigration custom form is available at www.knatravelform.kn. This online ED form will be officially launched tomorrow in a special MIAC press conference at the Royal St. Kitts Hotel. So you will hear quite a bit more about the online travel form. Passengers must have a valid email and once the form is completed and submitted, the passenger will receive an automatic reply in that email thanking you for successfully submitting your form. The information would be reviewed by agents from Immigration, Customs, Health and the Ministry of National Security. Upon approval, passengers will be notified by email with further instructions on entry into St. Kitts and Nevis. In the case where a passenger is rejected, he or she will be notified and advised to contact the Ministry of National Security. Once approval is granted to enter St. Kitts and Nevis, a confirmation email will be generated. The email must be saved to a mobile device or it must be printed. The information which includes a receipt number and a QR code which must be presented to immigration and the customs official on, upon arrival. All in transit passengers coming from within the Caribbean bubble, as Dr. Laws um, would have explained what that bubble is, or from a territory outside the Caribbean bubble must have proof of a valid negative COVID-19 PCR test result prior to arrival in St. Kitts and Nevis. In light of the fluidity of the COVID-19 pandemic, these protocols are likely to change. Travelers are encouraged to check www.covid19.gov.kn for constant updates. In transit passengers from within or outside of the bubble without evidence of a valid negative COVID-19 PCR test may be denied entry into St. Kitts and Nevis. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis reserves the right to refuse any person who does not have a valid test result. A device will be placed on the, des on the desktop of the immigration booth where each passenger will be required to scan the QR code which goes into the border management system for verification. Your travel document would also be scanned for verification and the details must be consistent with the details provided on the online form. All travel documents must have at least six months of val val validity. Entry into St. Kitts and Nevis must be through the Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw International Airport, the Vance Amory International Airport, the Basque Seaport, Marina Telka, Christoph Harbour, or Charlestown Seaport. In transit, passengers must mask must be worn at all times while at the airport in St. Kitts and Nevis, and at all of the seaports. All in-transit passengers must undergo a health assessment, which may include a temperature check and a brief interview, interview by port health officials. I would just like to, to, to invite persons to 
tune in to the press conference tomorrow because a lot more will be discussed. We will have um, Mr. Samuel will be there, the National Task Force Chairperson. We will have Ms. Brown from the Ministry of Tourism, someone from SCASPA. Um, Superintendent Henry will be there to discuss the regulations and we have our distinguished Dr. Laws who will again discuss the health protocols. So I will come back with some more information. Suffice to say that we already have eight uh, American Airlines flights booked to, to come to St. Kitts from Miami in November, starting November 7th, and we already have four BA British, Amer British Airways flights out of London. We know that LIAT should be resuming flights into the Federation, as well as Caribbean Airlines and quite a few of the private charters. And so we, we look forward to a very successful reopening on Saturday, and um, we going to let the technology take us where we have to go. So let us all continue to work together and um, see our borders be open successfully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Immigration Officer, for giving us a heads up about the news that uh, will break tomorrow, the unveiling, the official unveiling of the travel form that will be hosted on a special website. It's been a fast moving week. Uh, I will now turn to Minister of Tourism, Transport and Ports, and I believe he met with tour operators and taxi drivers this morning. Uh, yesterday, there was a walkthrough of the RLB International Airport. We'll hear more about uh, this. I will turn to the Honorable Lindsey Grant to present his opening remarks. Thank you, Valencia, and uh, a pleasant good evening to all those who are listening and those who are watching via ZIZ to Leadership Matters. I first of all would like to commend the task force who has worked tirelessly over the last seven months to have us in this unenviable position. As it stands today, we have had 19 cases of the COVID-19 and all have recovered. On October the 31st, Saturday coming, will be a signal moment in time for the Federation. Our borders will be tested significantly. As it stands today, there are two schools of thought. On the one hand, we have persons who would wish the borders to be open. And on the other hand, we have persons who would wish the borders not to be open. Obviously, both positions are diametr diametrically opposite. However, the federal cabinet, along with the advice of the NIOC, the task force, has come to the conclusion that we have to open our borders come October the 31st. But what does that mean? We have over the several months been given advice through different media platforms about the necessity of ensuring physical distancing, of ensuring we make sure that we sanitize properly. And so I believe that over the last several months, we have become accustomed to what is necessary to ensure our safety. However, I must stress that come a Saturday, we will be in, a, in an entirely different space. And so our positions will be very well tested come Saturday. But I'm confident that given the learnings and the teachings that we've had over the last seven months, we would ensure that we keep safe. However, 
our reopening things must clearly be very different as a destination we have to differentiate ourselves from the others we have to ensure that our safety protocols are satisfied because if we don't then we put ourselves in a position of contamination we have had the difficult position to determine whether or not we have a difficulty with the COVID-19 or as it stands now tourism being the number one economic driver and attracting some 6,000 plus persons in the industry are on the breadline. I had the opportunity today to meet with the taxi and tour operators for near shy four hours. The meeting I would submit was a very important meeting because at that particular time we were able to put the position of the state of the industry to the taxi and tour operators as it stands today. We had also the opportunity to have the task force headed by the Chairman Abdiya Samuels present at the meeting to at least communicate to that fraternity the reasons for our in-depth approach to this matter of the COVID-19. Of course, there were very many concerns raised by individuals in that fraternity. But I believe at the end of that meeting, the understanding was that what we have been doing over the last seven months is to ensure the safety of our citizens, which is paramount. In fact, because we are such a low-risk destination, it is going to add a value to our tourism product. I think the task force has to be commended for their tremendous work in keeping St. Kitts and Nevis as safe as it is today. You recognize that come November the 7th, for the first time over the last several months, we are in a position to receive international commercial air travel. Scheduled to come on November the 7th is American Airlines out of Miami and British Airways out of Gatwick, London. The American Airlines is scheduled to arrive with some 120 passengers. We had the opportunity yesterday to have a walkthrough with the federal cabinet and the members of New York and immigration and, and other stakeholders to see firsthand what has been done at the RLB International Airport over the last several weeks to retrofit the airport to a standard that is satisfactory to the health officials and near. I must say we were pleasantly surprised of the enormity of the work conducted over the last several days. And I am advised that the RLB International Airport would be in a state of readiness for Saturday, October 31st. And more importantly, to receive our international commercial carriers on November the 7th, 
2020. We have retrofitted the airport on the arrival section with a 50 by 100 foot retrofitted tent, fully air conditioned by November the 7th. We have put in the stations for the screenings. We have an isolation section. We have divided the immigration section into two, whereby we have a queuing area for about 40 persons. We are confident that everything will go smoothly. However, we are prepared for any eventuality. Today's meeting with the taxi and the tour operators saw a number of issues raised by them. And I think we were able to address most of those issues in that forum today. A big concern of them was that the prescribed protocols in terms of their transportation vehicles required them to put either plexiglass or Velcro. But I believe at the end of the day, having Mr. Samuels having explained to them the nature and the reason for that decision, I think they were comfortable with that. As of today's date, however, which is part of our concern, is that only 23 taxi operators are currently travel approved for transportation come October the 31st. And so that we communicated to that fraternity that we needed to see more taxi operators being travel approved so that we don't have a challenge when it comes to transportation of those individual visitors who come to St. Kitts and Nevis. Because the protocol will be that it is only the travel approved taxis and tour operators will be able to gain entry to the RLB International Airport in order to ply their trade. And so it is very important that that position is known and that position was communicated, in, communicated to them today. As you would have heard from Dr. Laws, there are two classes of travelers. Those who will come to St. Kitts and Nevis from the Caracom bu bubble, and those who would come to St. Kitts and Nevis outside of the bubble. Those who come to St. Kitts and Nevis within the Caracom bubble will have a certain number of hotel and properties available to them, which are in the Caracom bubble, the Hermitage Inn, the Hamilton Beach Villas and Spa, Montpellier Plantation and Beach, Nevis Golden Rock Inn, Paradise Beach Hotel, Pinnis Beach Hotel, Sugar Bay Club, and Timothy Beach Resort. As far as the international travelers are concerned, those will be designated to the branded hotels. I believe we have worked tirelessly over the last seven months to put the necessary protocols in place, have communicated the necessary message to the community, and I am confident that come October the 31st and beyond, we will have smooth travels. But I should emphasize that what happens here on is determined by what every single citizen does. And so we expect that every single citizen would appreciate that the COVID-19 pandemic is real. We need every single citizen to understand that the wearing of masks is essential. The sanitization of the hands is essential. 
the social distancing is essential for us to maintain our position as it stands today. If we look at our Caribbean brothers and sisters, and if we take, for example, St. Lucia, I think it was only yesterday that St. Lucia saw the highest number of COVID cases, and I think it was nine. We have to ensure that not only do we ensure that our citizens are safe, but our visitors alike. And we will take every conceivable position to ensure that that position is maintained. And so I want to commend the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis in advance for ensuring that the protocols which we have established over the last seven months are maintained to ensure that each and every citizen of the country is kept COVID free. And with those few remarks, I will end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister of Tourism, Transport and Ports. And I'd like to reiterate what the Honorable Minister said. We are indeed in an enviable position However, rather than being aroused by envy, other countries could learn from our health officials and our country's leadership. Indeed, leadership matters, particularly in the smallest independent country in the Western Hemisphere at this particular time. We will take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear from the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high touch areas regularly. Dividers or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. Welcome back to Leadership Matters. I now turn to the Honorable Prime Minister to give his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Valencia. My fellow citizens and residents, I am grateful for this opportunity to communicate with you another time on a matter of major concern and importance to all of us to wit the imminent opening Okay, I will turn to the Honorable Prime Minister again. I'm sorry, we had a little bit of technical difficulty. I will turn to the Honorable Prime Minister again. Sir? Thank you very much, Valencia. 
My fellow citizens and residents, I am grateful for this opportunity to communicate with you another time on a matter of major concern and importance to all of us, to wit, the imminent opening of our country's borders fully to travelers, be they from the region or beyond. This is an historic moment. By utilizing an all of society approach, we as a people and country bonded together. We put our best foot forward. We confronted COVID-19 pandemic and we survived to tell the story. It is an amazing success story that the smallest country in the hemisphere, St. Kitts and Nevis, has been the most successful in controlling COVID-19. Of all independent countries in the world, we have the lowest number of COVID-19 cases at 19. We have managed to avoid the community spread taking place in other countries and all cases are successfully recovered thanks be to God and we have no deaths and records so far. We have to keep doing the sensible thing, following the science, complying with the protocols. We have to do the right thing. And we must do all that we can to keep safe. I advise that we must be careful, but never fearful. We do all the right things and we leave the rest to an all-powerful God. I want to record my deepest appreciation to our citizens and residents who very early on recognized the danger of COVID-19. You made the huge sacrifices as we close our borders, imposed lockdowns, insisted on the wearing of masks, and you complied with the protocol for hand hygiene, social and physical distancing. Yes, the majority of our people are in agreement with the government's policies and are grateful that the Team Unity-led administration has kept us very safe so far. We have implemented a stepwise approach following the science, learning from others, and adapting to meet our unique situation. We opened up gradually and carefully such sectors as agriculture and fisheries, manufacturing, retail and wholesale, and construction. Now we focus our efforts and revitalizing our hotel and restaurant sectors. There are risks associated with opening up our borders, and we have to acknowledge these. These risks, however, are very manageable. We have been encouraged to wear masks for months, and we heard our chief medical officer tonight re revisit that particular need and requirement and ensued an encouragement. Let us make sure we do wear our masks, especially after Saturday, when a new influx of persons will come in, some from very high-risk areas, such as the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Europe, and other Caribbean islands. We are among the last to open up. We were among the first to close. You may ask why we are opening up when we have fought COVID-19 so well thus far. I can answer that question again. Why are we opening up in the following ways? We are opening up fully now so that our citizens and permanent residents trapped abroad by COVID-19 could return to our beautiful and peaceful country. They have families waiting for them to return, churches, communities, and jobs waiting for them. We did promise that when we regain some normalcy, our people will be allowed to return home. Things are now relatively under control. 
after seven months in another country, it is time for our people who want to, to be able to return home. After all, we are agreed, there is no place like home, especially when that home is St. Kitts and Nevis. We have over the last seven months strengthened our health system. We expended nearly three million dollars to support the Cuban Medical Brigade, which we brought here to strengthen and enhance our capacity to deliver superlative health care. We have recently expended and committed $7 million to retrofit CASPA and to keep its workers safe on the job. We have spent millions on our early and childhood sector and education generally. Our people have been informed and educated and they know what to do to keep themselves safe in the environment of COVID-19. Yes, we are opening up too, because people want a sense of near normalcy in their lives. And work is a critical aspect of that normalcy. When COVID-19 struck just over seven months ago, over 26,000 jobs were available in St. Kitts and Nevis, the highest number in history. Some people held more than two jobs and I want to commend their industry and willingness to work. For them, it is no longer the same. People need the self-worth, the routine, the stability and income that a job provides, a reason to get up, and something to look forward to do. Work adds a sense of balance, purpose, and it helps to anchor one's health. We admit that we cannot keep the economy locked down in perpetuity or for too long as certain sectors would be completely destroyed. The truth is we know enough to open carefully and safely and that is what we are committed to do. I am happy that we were able to assist those made jobless by COVID-19 with income support through our government poverty alleviation program and a $1,000 monthly stipend through the Social Security Board. To date, over $45 million have been provided to support displaced workers and a further $11.1 million have been invested in our severance fund to pay workers who have been severed. We are opening up to allow our hotels, our guest houses and residences to eventually re-engage those who were laid off. Our country is part of the world and we are stepping up our efforts to restore our economy. Allowing tourism to rebuild is a critical part of our recovery plan. We will open up safely. Our medical experts have established protocols for us to do so. All we need to do is to follow the guidelines and be wise. Use common sense. Protect ourselves, our families, our loved ones, and our country. As we are discussing Open Up, I want to address a few other matters. There has been some misinformation regarding the cost of persons being placed in quarantine. I wish to remind the public of the following facts. There is no adequate public venue for quarantine. We started with the system of quarantining at home. Some breach it and they put many persons at risk. As a result, we had to secure government monitored quarantine sites in order to keep our people safe. OTI and other hotels have accepted to provide designated areas. For example, block of rooms appropriately, appropriately suited and situated on their property to serve as quarantine. I am advised that the cost at OTI 
was negotiated with its owners, the TDC Group of Companies, because its US $500 for 14 days, not for one day, and this equates to just over 35 US per day. I repeat, 35 US dollars per day. I must repeat that there is no profit in this sum for the government. The full US $500 goes to TDC. In some countries in the region, the cost is at least $100 per day. In St. Kitts, the cost again is $35 here per day. Here our people then pay a minimum cost for private quarantine facilities. The government, in addition, bears the cost of electricity and water at OTI, and these costs are hugely substantial. Members of the public will recall that OTI was closed. We ask them to open to accommodate us. We are, in fact, as a government then, subsidizing the stay of everyone who is being quarantined at the OTI hotel. In addition to water and electricity which we pay, we pay the security there and we have to provide protective equipment for all workers of the government who are put in service there. Arrangements at the Royal St. Kitts Hotel and Sugar Bay Hotel or any other hotel I am advised are privately negotiated. Additionally, students and persons over 62 are generally exempted from these costs on request. We have, for example, brought home by charter students from Cuba and Jamaica at a cost of well over $225,000. We quarantined them and the government bared the burden of the cost. We disbursed over $1,000 stipend monthly to students in the United States of America who requested our support. We have done more than any other government to assist our citizens and residents. We have invested and committed $120 million in a stimulus package. It still is the largest, the most comprehensive, and the best in our region. The government is working hard to keep our people safe. We will continue to do our very best to ensure that we can keep our people safe with the least possible cost or burden imposed on our people. More cannot reasonably be expected from the government, especially at this time of difficulty all over the world. I want to call on all of us to be very responsible. And as Mr. Grant admonished, admonished us to take COVID-19 seriously, it is a deadly disease. Since we are talking about the opening up of our borders, I want also to say something to our taxi operators and others. Taxi operators and all persons in hotel and hospitality need to be very much aware that it cannot be business as usual. Changes are required and changes will be enforced. One such change I am advised is the need to use plexiglass or lucite plastic. This I am advised is to protect the taxi operators and their customers from the transmission of the virus. I'm advised that the cost of the plastic is cheaper and the reconfiguration can be done at a very reasonable rate. To my mind, it is better 
to spend a few hundred dollars to sustain a business for over a year than to expose oneself to death as a fatal consequence of one's own negligence. I say a year because the COVID-19 will be with us for the foreseeable future and there is no prediction that it will end in 2021. So we know that at least for another year, COVID-19 will still be with us unless something magically happens with respect to the global availability of a safe vaccine. In that regard, I want to note that we have already invested over a quarter million US dollars as a partial down payment to ensure that when the vaccine becomes available to Gavi, that St. Kitts and Nevis will have an opportunity to access the vaccine. All hotel workers and those in hospitality must protect themselves. Your employers have a duty to provide you with personal protective equipment to enhance your safety on the job. And my advice is that you must insist on these. I close by encouraging all our people to be on guard, to treat the COVID-19 pandemic with the seriousness it deserves. The life you save could very well be yours. It is a most contagious disease that has infected over 43 million people to date and it has caused the death of about 1,155,553 people. This then is a serious and complex virus constantly changing and we do not know yet enough about it even at this stage. We in St. Kitts and Nevis like our neighbors elsewhere in the Caribbean and beyond, are taking a major step forward. We can make this journey together. Our opening safely is critical if we are to secure the stronger and safer future. Let us work together and let us comply with the established protocols that we were asked to observe over the last seven months. If we were to do so, I believe that all will be well. May God continue to bless the wonderful people of St. Kitts and Nevis, and may he keep us safe. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. When we come back, it will be your turn to talk. Our numbers are 466-2666-662-8674-767-4765 and our overseas line is 239-645-4500. Questions can also be sent via WhatsApp to 869-661-5683. However, first preference will be given to those who phone in to the program. We'll be back after a quick break. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high-touch areas regularly. Dividers 
or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. My name is O'Neill Mullowin and I have been giving nature to her for over 40 years. My passion in the rainforest is about plants and the wildlife. There are many different species of plants throughout the rainforest floor, which is like 35 to about 40 different species. And most of them can be used for homeopathic medicinal purposes, like the main apple plants can be used for loss of appetite. This is age or lantana. They both can be used for tea purposes. In my hand, I'm holding silver trumpet. Scientific name, citrofolio. It's been recommended to make a bush tea, drop the height of the blood pressure, hypertension cooling. The rainforest in Sinkis has been protected and actually growing. This is the ideal time for you to explore and to have an adventure. Remember to keep the forest clean, just the way you meet it. Hello, my name is Jasmine Francis, co-owner of Alfredo's, located on the Bay Road. Today I wish to share with you one of our signature dishes, fried fish and cornmeal ball in a Creole sauce served with fried plantain, pumpkin fritters, sweet potato and garden salad. Our fish today is a popular eating fish on the island, thumb fish. Cornmeal is a traditional St. Kitts dish made from ground dried corn. The cornmeal is turned and folded into boiling seasoned water and vegetables to make a delicious dish. I hope this inspires you to try something new and add to our rich culinary culture. If you are in the area, do stop by Alfredo's restaurant for an authentic Kittitian dish. Hope to see you soon. Live on Leadership Matters. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is, I'm just trying to get some clarity because I just tuned into the program not too long ago, and during the Prime Minister's talk, he had said, um, uh, made a comment about students and persons over the age of 60-something, um, that their quarantine would be subsidized. Uh, did I hear that correctly, or can you tell me? Um, what it is that he meant by that. I have some friends that are in their 80s that will be returning on the 7th of November and they want to quarantine at home. So how does that um, subsidy, how would that affect them? what he said a little later. Thank you for calling and for your question. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Hello, good night. Do we still have that caller? Yes, I'm here. Yes, good night. Good night, Leadership Matters. Good night to the other Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris, Leader of Number 4, Vice to show Number 4, Fear um, More, Dr. Lord, my good friend there, Ms. you. Welcome to the Shimani. Um, let me first go to the, the Prime Minister. Um, Prime Minister, at the point of opening, we have consumers who are nervous. What advice would you give to them in terms of the body going to be open and we, when they have seen an increase in the prices like for masks, hand sanitizers, and gloves? What would you say to them to cushion them so that they cannot be nervous where they are thinking that we're going into lockdown and they won't be able to shop 
and get these uh, listed for their home. Um, to the honorable request, I'm happy to connect with the two of my taxi operators to ask for it, and you made yourself available to hear them all. Um, what I want to ask you, is there any plans in assisting them with a hand sanitizer and any experience for us thus far, and then afterwards they will be on their own? I'm not sure what care about of the meeting. I'm not sure that was raised, but maybe you can elaborate on that. Um, also, is there any private vehicle would be allowed to pick up anybody coming in or also taking them back to the airport? Or it will only be just certified to operate a taxi will be allowed in the facility. Um, do I have any more questions with Oh, yes. Um, so, Mr. Lord, um, was there any arrangement made with any company about persons who leave their job will be able to return? Because there's a company that speaks to my media saying that um, you, the, the, the task force, given the, the goal, I would agree that one that once you leave the establishment, you won't be allowed back into. Maybe that kind of set in the first stage when COVID-19 just stopped. But if that was there, I don't think that it should be replaced. No. So maybe you can clear yes, that because uh, persons are very uncomfortable about that. Mr. Prime Minister, once again, continue to show up leadership matters. You have a full slate of parties here. And I'm uh, happy that we continue to show leadership that's what we need in this country. And continue to take us forward and as the bar of open, I know you have to manage control. And we believe in you. And once we believe in you, everything will be open. And we need to work with our very talented. Just help me. I'll continue to listen. Caller? Do we have additional callers? Yes, we do. We have uh, quite a number. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good night. Good night to my wonderful Prime Minister and others. Good leadership. I just want you to know the good you have done and doing and having this program every Tuesday that people can hear their views and questions. Please, Mrs. Grant, don't let people vex with the Prime Minister when they call you to give their views. You, did, you don't give them. And some people say they are unity, but messing up unity people badly. Please to look into it, Prime Minister. Prime Minister, two Tuesdays ago, a caller speak about opening up of the borders, which will be open soon. Your guess is timely. Prime Minister, you know this your country. You always say you love Sabia. I know you would safeguard it. We have no debts. You will try to keep it so because it's you that still will blame. This is a different government, not like the past. If people come in, they can come, yes. We have to make sure it's our native. We have sufficient foreigners. It's not hol If it's holiday they're coming for, it's fine. No work, dear, for them. You did not bring no corona. We have a lot of natives all over, yes. Other countries can help themselves at a time like no, you have done well. If it was not for the corona and giving out all those money, you would be well ahead. Thank God for you and for your second term. None like you. Even they are saying things had nothing doing in the country. Even the ministers at the 93rd meeting want to know how you get that do. And I hope all those children and parents pray for you and glad for you for what you have done for them. Dr. Laws, keep on doing what good you're doing. And Mrs. Hughes, you have your part to play by searching out for them. They will have ways to get in. Prime Minister, they don't want you. They will do and say to get at you. Hurricane, you again. And citizens, please be careful and do the protocol. The horse is prepared against the day of the battle, but safely is the Lord. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when they commit. Great is thy faithfulness. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace be with you. 
fight the good fight in Jesus. You could not have a better name like that in time like now. Get home safely all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening to everybody on the panel. And I'm telling you all that it's a good thing that you all is opening the border, but we people have to be safe. And in order for you to know what's really going on on the ground, you have to get informers. Either you pay them by a stipend, or you give them a word of thank you. And then when this come to you with the information, don't turn your back on it. Because these people on the street, no more than those in the air condition office, right? And they're, they're looking up for thinking because everybody know the feeling of pain somewhere along the line. And I'm glad for how you are operating this thing and bringing everything to a thing. And I hope people get the sense enough to go and bide with the laws and the regulation what you all put down there. And Mr. Prime Minister, thank you again for letting the country know every Wednesday night what goes on, Tuesday night, what goes on in St. Kitts. You know, so God bless you, sir. And bless your cabinet and bless everybody around you. And God is good all the time. Good night. Good night. God bless you, too. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Good evening, all. Mr. Prime Minister, Minister of Tourism, CMO, and the Chief of Immigration. Um, listening to this discussion tonight and before, we've been hearing about what happens when visitors come in, whether from the bubble or inside the bubble or outside of the bubble. When they come in, they do a test and the test is successful, they go off to their respective locations based on their, st um, their status. Um, what happens if somebody does not succeed, the, the, the test at the airport is unsuccessful? What then? What happens to that person? Are they sent back in, back to where they came from, or are they put in some special location? That's one. The next one is, um, we're hearing of the borders being open on the 31st of October this year, and um, the international flights like American Airlines, British Airways coming in on the 7th of November. We are not hearing anything at all between the 31st of October and the 7th of November. Could you give us some indication of anticipated flights coming in during that week? I'll listen off here like everybody else. Thanks again, and again... Thanks for giving, feeding us with all this information. Thank you, caller. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yes, good evening. This is Sir Scarlett calling, and I say good evening to the Honorable Prime Minister, also to Dr. Lord, and the Honorable... Lindsay Grant, and also to Miss Hughes. Thank you for your time that you have taken to come on and have this program, and not only program, but informative, to inform everyone listening at home and abroad of the steps you have taken to reach the South. I just want to compliment the Prime Minister for his insight, and not only that, but also the team that has worked thus far. Mr. Samuel, the health team, those in the government in all places, the NGOs, everybody who came together so that we can reach the star. And now that we have reached where we have the opening of our borders, he who has helped us hitherto, I know that he will help us all the journey through. You have made us very proud as petitions, whether we are there or here. 
because you have never failed to come out and let us know exactly what is happening, where we stand, and how you are working to ensure that the people of St. Kitts and Nevis maintain good health and they are in good hands. And so I just ask in the residents and all the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, those who are going to travel back home and those who are home, please continue to keep the protocols. I know that many of you are listening to what is happening here in the United States, and not only the United States, but all over the world. I mean, today when I look and I see that here in Florida, we have over 4,000 new cases. A place like America, and everything seems to have just gone out of control. And we have to say, thank God for the leadership. Thank God for the government, the cabinet members, the ministers of government who have come together and work. The team, Dr. Hazel, Dr. Wilkinson, Mr. Samuel, Inspector Henry, and all those who came together, nurses, doctors, they've put their shoulders to the wheel, and we have reached too far to turn back. So please abide by the protocols, the wearing of the mask, especially on the buses, because I've heard many are not carrying out the rules. But it is for our good. It is for your health. And as the Prime Minister pointed out tonight, the life that you are saving might be your very own. And not only that of your own, but of someone dear to you. We are there for one another. We are our neighbor's keeper. So, Father, I once again... I just ask God's blessing on the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. And I ask, Lord, that your people, the people, will understand all of this, all of this has been done for their good and for their benefit. And to you we say, to God the glory for great things you have done. Have a good night. God bless you all. Bless you. God bless you too. Thank you very much, Matron, and we thank you for your thoughts and prayers. Please stay safe where you are. I'll take uh, two additional calls and then we'll uh, break, uh, well, we'll go to the panelists uh, for them to answer your questions. Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Good night. Good night. Mr. Prime Minister, Dr. Lord, Ms. Hughes, and the Honorable. The press, um, Secretary, everybody, good night. Now, my biggest concern that I have, I love this country more than any one of you sitting there tonight, but you respect still. When I travel from Sandy Point, my name is Lorenzo Williams, better known as Larry. When I travel all the way up and I look at the drains, and we are saying we are opening again, and we are just not cleaning for the opening sake of the Federation for the, the overseas person. But we who here, we look at the Janes going all the way up. When you read my Mattingly, the outside there, the, the, all the shops just going up on the side road and nobody cleaning, all coming across by U.S. University, the sidewalks and everything, the grass are taking over. And it's about time, Mr. Prime Minister. I know you cannot do everything. Get everybody who's supposed to got their role to play play their role and keep our country looking good. And we are not just cleaning just for the, the tourists alone. But I love this country to my bones. And when I drive go to Basti and I look at the side of the roads, it is really, really hurting. And we know we got the manpower, 
we got the, the facilities, everything to do and keep our country looking good. So if the persons who are tasked with leading these departments not playing the role, drop the hammer on them, sir. Anyway, good night. I listen to you all every week. I will. I just tune in. So have a pleasant night to all of you. Good night to you, too. And thank you for your feedback. Do we have one last caller? Good night, caller. You're live on Leadership Matters. Yes, good night, good night. Good night. Um, well, I'm calling from Angola. Um, I am planning to travel to St. Kitts when it comes to open. So I'm calling to find out exact things, what I have to do before I enter the country because... I've been hearing all kind of different things. I've been hearing that, well, they just take a test two days before. If you come and it's negative, you still have to quarantine for 14 days, which I don't think it makes sense. So I would like to know exact what I have to do, everything, before the plan of coming to St. So Actually, I'm from St. Kitts, you know. Yeah, but I'm living in Angola for a period of time, so... I just want to know exactly what I have to go to before I enter. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Okay, it's 9.35. A lot of questions uh, have been asked, so I'll, I'll give the panelists an opportunity to respond. And then if we have more time, I think we, we should have more time, we'll, we'll get a number of callers in again. Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws, I'll turn to you first to answer some questions. Okay, thank you, Valencia. And we were asked a number of very good questions. Um, one of the callers asked about quarantining at home. Regrettably, at this time, uh, we are not allowing anyone to be quarantined at home without uh, a security facility. What do I mean by that? So if you are a returning national and you want to quarantine at home, we are asking you to go onto the website, covid19.gov.kn. I repeat, covid19.gov.kn. And there is the link that says pre-approved quarantine. And so you can uh, submit an application to have your home assessed or evaluated and once it meets the requirements, and once you are willing to pay for the security or the security fee, uh, and once you would have signed the contract, then you can quarantine at home. But you must pay for the security facility uh, for that. Uh, in terms of, uh, somebody also mentioned or asked about the COVID-19 taxes. Uh, we are recommending that uh, the taxis and the ground transportation come on board in terms of uh, putting in the required partitions, plexiglass, or uh, the plastic and the Velcro. Because the, the high-risk tourists can only travel from the airport to their accommodation via a COVID-19 approved taxi or ground transportation. Um, somebody asked about those who would come in uh, and exhibit symptoms or COVID-like symptoms or even with a, a, a positive PCR test. Okay, so travelers coming to Senkis must complete the entry form uh, at least 24 hours before boarding the flight to St. Kitts. You should also upload your PCR test. And if per chance this test result is positive, you won't be allowed uh, to come. You won't be, uh, you won't be granted approval. Uh, in fact, you won't be allowed to travel on the aircraft with a, a positive PCR test. So you, you will be allowed to come to St. Kitts with a negative PCR test. However, if on arrival at RLB International Airport you exhibit symptoms, COVID-like symptoms, for example, coughing, sneezing, uh, shortness of breath, or even a fever, you will then be channeled to the testing booth. So at RLB, 
we are going to have three testing booths. So you will be channeled to the testing booth where the appropriate nasopharyngeal sample will be taken and the sample will be taken down to the next gen lab who is providing us the testing capabilities. After your sample is taken, you will then be escorted to the isolation room. There are actually two isolation rooms on the ramp at RLB. While at the in the isolation room, you will be evaluated, medically evaluated and triaged. And then you will be transported, transported to the COVID-19 ward. If per chance you are assessed as being mild or even or mild uh, in terms of mild symptoms, you may also be taken or you can also be taken to your accommodation. Please note that each participating hotel has identified and blocked a number of rooms, X number of rooms for isolation of cases and Y number of rooms uh, for passengers who exhibit symptoms and who are awaiting their PCR test result. So that provides you an overview as to what happens to an inbound passenger who may be exhibiting COVID-like symptoms or even a fever. The last caller inquired about coming from Anguilla. So it's interesting to note uh, that Anguilla is part of the Caribbean bubble. And so if you are coming from Anguilla and you uh, would have been there for over 21 days, we are only asking you to provide us a negative COVID-19 test. Um, and you, this test should be taken within uh, two, three days of traveling to St. Kitts. Once you would have arrived at the airport, you will be subjected to a focused medical screening. You'll be asked uh, some questions just to ensure you aren't exhibiting any of the COVID symptoms. Your temperature will be done. And once you are negative, uh, normal temperature, no symptoms, then you will be free to go through customs, go through immigration customs, and uh, freely integrate into our society. So it's quite simple if you are coming from Anguilla. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Medical Officer. I'll, tu I'll turn to the Chief Immigration Officer to weigh in on some of the matters that were raised. All right, it's just to reinforce that persons wishing to travel back to the Federation must go online and fill out the the form, the ED online form, and Dr. Laws would have given the, the website, and I'm going to give the other one that will be launched officially tomorrow, which is www.knatravelform.kn, and that will include the immigration, the customs, and the health component of the, 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 the immigration, the, the form that will um, that must be filled out online. And then the other one, get www.covid19.gov.kn. And those forms, once you would have filled out the form, send the application through, you will receive a confirmation letter. You, will, you can print the letter because on it will have a, Q, a QR code, which when you come to, to the immigration booth, that QR code will be will be read from a tablet. The information will already be in the system, and um, that is done in a way with the, the, the paper, the, the, the hard copies of the, um, the ED form. And so we're going using the technology that is available to limit the, the contact as much as possible with um, with passengers and. Um, that is the new norm for us. So persons go online once you tend to, to, to uh, return home or visit St. Kitts and Nevis, the, the form must be filled out online before coming to the, the Federation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Immigration Officer. I'll invite the Honorable Lindsey Grant, the Minister of Tourism, Transport and Ports to give his input. 
Thank, thank you, Valencia. By my recollection, I think there were only three questions really um, for me. The first one, I think, related to whether or not the government has any plans to assist the taxi and two operators in terms of giving them sanitizers, etc. What I would say is that no, the government has not um, deliberated on that. And in fact, when we had the meeting with the taxi operators and two operators today, that really was not raised as, as an issue. So that much I can say for that. In terms of the caller asking the anticipated flights between October the 31st and November the 7th, as far as I'm advised, the first international commercial flight comes in on November the 7th, 2020. Between October the 31st and November the 7th, there would be the usual charters, etc., which have been happening um, for uh, several months now. Liat Old, I understand, is scheduled to fly in the first week of November, has not scheduled St. Kitts and Nevis on the itinerary. So as it stands now, Liat is not expected to be in St. Kitts and Nevis between October the 31st and November the, the 7th. So the bottom line is, it's that the real first commercial flight will touch down at the RLB on November the 7th, which would be American Airlines coming out of Miami and British Airways coming out of London, Gatwick. The third question I think was raised was with respect to passenger, well, taxi buses and taxi and tour operators. What I can say to that is that our travel approved process took a two-step process. First, we had the training of a number of taxi and tour operators. There are some 500 plus taxi and tour operators registered in the system at the moment. And all of those the significant number of those were trained. The other process involves the inspection of the taxi buses and the tour buses. And this is what guarantees the travel approved seal by the St. Kitts Tourism Authority. Dr. Laws alluded to it in that part of the process involves either the outfitting of these buses and, 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 and vehicles, either with the plexiglass or the softer material in terms of the Velcro and the plastics. And once we have been satisfied that the, the, um, the entities have been outfitted with such, then they would pass the necessary tests, etc. As I said before, at this moment, there are only 23 taxi operators who have had the travel approved seal. We expect a, 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 a number of them to come on board having um, communicated the message to them again today and so we are hopeful in that regard. What I would say however is that the number of passengers to be carried in each vehicle has been reduced to meet the social distancing standards. So for example, a 25-seater will now be only to hold 10 passengers. The 15-seaters will now only hold 6 passengers. The 7-seaters will now only hold 4 passengers. And the 5-seaters, 2 passengers. And those numbers are all in an attempt to ensure that we have the requisite social distancing. And I think those were the questions that were directed to me, Valencia. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. In relation to the cost of quarantine and exemptions, the Honorable Prime Minister said students and persons over 62 are generally exempted from payment on request. So I, I suppose you can show a student ID or a government ID that shows your, your age. Uh, I will turn to the Honorable Prime Minister who 
will uh, weigh in on matters that were raised. Thank you. In relation to the matter of the subsidization of the quarantine, that refers specifically to the situation at the Ocean Terrence Inn, OTI Hotel. And we say subsidize, we gave an idea what the cost was. We hear a lot about a $500. It is actually $35 US per day. Over a 14 day period, it comes to about $500. Um, then the government pays the cost of electricity, the cost of water, the cost of cleaning, the cost of the security services and the provision of food for its officials who have to be basically functioning at that particular facility. None of those costs are passed on. The only cost then people pay at OTI is the cost determined by OTI for access to its facility. And that cost is simply an accommodation cost that is born. And when we inquired what was the cost elsewhere, we were told that in other islands, for similar hotel accommodations, you will have to begin at around 100 US dollars and going upwards. So again, it is much better here. Indeed, there was a video going around recently reflecting the conditions of quarantine facilities in some islands. And really, one will be very shy and timid of going to some of those sites. But again, um, we just want to make the point that we are doing our very best for our people. Those who can afford to use villas and other private residences, again, having regard to the experience we have had where the honor system, where you expected persons who should be quarantined to observe that and persons breach that requirement, we have no choice but to ensure that security is available to monitor those who are in quarantine at any private residences, a villa or whatever it is. If you determine that is where you want to go, Clearly, the cost of the security will be borne by you. We have a number of private security firms that have had their employees trained and prepared to deliver. The burden on the police will be too much. If many persons are opting to be at home, it means every home will have to be guarded, if you will, on a 24-hour basis, 24-7. That then would mean that no police officer will be available to do the other work that they normally would be required to do. And so we have had to involve private security. The cost for security in that context is what has been determined by the private providers of those services. My understanding is that despite the best efforts of the task force, and maybe Dr. Laws or Abdias at some point can speak to this, the operators, the providers of private security are saying that they will require at least $20 per hour. They are 24 hours in a day. So that will work out in the region of about 6,000 EC dollars for security. That is not a government fee. You can avoid paying that fee if you opt to go into the government designated quarantine facility at OTI. But if you figure you want something nicer, something better, if you figure you have the money to pay, we have no problem with that. That then becomes a matter of a private arrangement for which, of course, you have to bear the cost. So if persons opt for a more expensive arrangement, it is entirely a choice that you are exercising. And the government accepts no blame for that particular matter and that choice. We wish you well whatever you choose to do. 
you choose to do. In the question of the lockdown raised by Bucky, I want to say that we are not contemplating any lockdowns. Lockdowns, if you look at the rest of the world, only become necessary when someone goes wayward and jeopardizes the health and safety of the rest of the members of the public. If perhaps somebody were to go have a wild party and in their midst is someone who is infected with the virus and it is sufficiently significant that in order to successfully do the contact tracing, to successfully be able to create a halt in the spread of the virus, it becomes absolutely necessary to lock down. Then we must do that to save lives. That is why we are advising persons to use their common sense, be safe. Wear your mask, avoid large crowds, and adhere to the other protocols, the hand hygiene, etc., etc., you know them. Social distancing and physical distancing, especially when you are relating to strangers, persons outside the household, they become very necessary. And we are urging people to practice doing it at home, especially when there are children at home, so at least the children understand that it is something normal. It is something that they must do because mommy is wearing a mask and daddy is wearing a mask and auntie is wearing a mask. Because seeing it in, as part of their lived existence makes it easier for them to follow the pattern. And as we have an influx now, as we open up our borders, we need to ensure that that is being done. The examples from other countries, St. Lucia, Barbados, etc., where there have been um, spikes, and the minister tonight spoke of a case of St. Lucia which had had perhaps its largest number in any one day in recent time, in a long time. Most of those cases have come from citizens, not the tourists, citizens who would have returned from high-risk destinations such as United States of America, London, any other country outside of the bubble, and may have exposed others, other members of their families, etc. So this um, insistence that some have that they shouldn't be quarantined is really not a wise thing. You must tell your family and friends who are coming you're coming, you cannot come home until you go through the quarantine period because you may not know. Yes, they take a test before they come, but the test is as good as the day on which it was given. So you take a test three days before you come. What happened on the next day after the test? The other day after the test and the next one. Anywhere between that period, you can be infected. That is why I said the test generally is as good on the day or the time. Because after you could have left the lab, you could have gone, get engaged with somebody who is infected. And the quarantine really is not just in St. Kitts. And sometimes you wonder why our people get so fussy about doing the right thing. Two weeks ago, we sent a number of students off to Taiwan. They had to go into 14 days quarantine, all day they were tested here. If you were to leave St. Kitts now to go to Canada, Canada had, for a very long period of time, a 14 day quarantine period. And when CARICOM governments attempted to ask that they make an exception, given the fact that we were lorries, it fell on the fears. 14 day is an important requirement. What we have done with respect to guests is to acknowledge that some may come for a shorter period of time. And in that context, we have revised the system to allow them still to be able to enjoy certain conveniences at the designated hotels. 
And after subsequent testing and they are negative, they can then integrate in a more fulsome way. So we have been very flexible with respect to that. The matter that Bucky raised with respect to the price of these essential items, sanitizers, etc., is a matter which we will look at. We will want to hope and we will urge the Chamber of Industry to exercise moral suasion on the providers of these so that persons do not become engaged in price gouging. It would be very sad if at a time of crisis, those who are engaged in retail and wholesale trade are bringing out their worst, their worst possible behaviors. So this is something, Bucky, that we shall investigate. Dr. Laws is here and she can correct me. As I understand it, it is that you keep your hands clean as often as possible. Soap and water is just as good and just as effective. The sanitizer only comes in if you can't have access to them, then they are good substitutes. So if you have the soap and water, you use that. You go to the bathroom, you wash your hands, you dry your hand properly, you are as good. So there is no need to engage in unnecessary expenditures. And again, when you have your sanitizer, I mean, we will say you waste it if you use it in a wasteful way. Just enough to do what needs to be done. And we have to be frugal at this particular time and only spend on what is necessary. I want to thank Alice for her call, her words of encouragement, and ask her to continue to share her wisdom and experience with the rest of the country. Thanks to Rock and all the others who have called in and given support and advice. Rock reminded us that the ordinary people who are in the streets, moving about, have a lot of important knowledge and are more knowledgeable at times than those who are in the AC. We accept that. So we listen to everyone and we respect the ideas. We think about them. We pick sense out of nonsense, as we would say, and we do the very best that we can at the particular moment in time. Again, Nurse Garnet is very special. She is one of Teams Unity's prayer warriors, and she is a nurse and senior nursing practitioner of many years standing. We recently, in fact, acknowledge her outstanding contribution to nursing and to healthcare by naming the Tabernacle Health Center in her honor. I want to say to her as she encourages us, we value that and it is important at times to have acknowledgement of one's good work. So thank you for calling in and encourage you to continue praying for us. For myself, I will always feel a sense of gratitude and indebtedness to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis who over the last 27 years that have been involved in public service as an elected member starting way back in 93 continue to repose their confidence in me and to those people who have given me the opportunity for a second time in a row to serve the country to the best of my ability, I pledge to do my very best, not only to keep St. Kitts and Nevis safe, but to ensure that we deliver a stronger and safer future. Lorenzo call about the matter of the drains and environmental health is one which the cabinet has spent a good amount of time discussing and we are committed to bring a number of agencies that are involved in the provision of that service together to work out an effective plan. So we share your concerns, we are deeply concerned, and we will do something about it. 
again, those were the, the queries that I think were left for me to respond to. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. When we come back, we will address more of your questions, but they will be the ones that uh, came in via WhatsApp. We'll be back after a quick break. As we get ready to serve, it is important that we improve our vehicles to ensure the safety of our guests and ourselves. Outfit your vehicle with appropriate dividers to separate driver from passenger. Plexiglass or Velcro plastic divider may be used. Have a minimum of two hand sanitizers, one for you and one for your guests. Always carry extra mask and disinfectant in your vehicle and post signs to remind passengers to use hand sanitizers and wear their masks and follow social distancing protocols. When providing a service, it is important that the hands of the passengers are sanitized before entering the vehicle. Remember, a mask must always be worn by all occupants of the vehicle for the duration of the trip. At the end of the trip, Remember to wish your passengers a good day. Ensure they have left no personal items behind and sanitize their hands. Once you have completed your trip, remember to sanitize your hands and your vehicle. Seats must be disinfected and all high touch areas, such as doors and seat handles, must be sanitized before your next trip. Let's do all we can to keep ourselves and our visitors safe. My name is Carla Astafan and I have been a potter for over 20 years. I know it's a very difficult time for all of us in the industry, but this time has given me the opportunity to really rethink the whole operation. It's given me time to do other things, to do my pottery. I'm trying to stockpile on my work. To my brothers and sisters in the tourism industry, this is a time to look towards the future. This is a time to examine what you have been doing, see what new things you can do, how you can diversify, how you can innovate, plan ahead. So with proper planning, we will all be prosperous in the future. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high-touch areas regularly. Dividers or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. Welcome back to Leadership Matters. We don't have time to uh, open the phone lines again, but we will address WhatsApp questions that came in. 
firstly, I'll go to uh, Minister Grant. I'll turn to the Honorable Minister. There's a question to him. Good night, all. Can Minister Grant please tell me when will Port Zante open? Minister Grant. Thank you. Thank you. Despite the, the challenges that we have with the COVID-19, we continue to work assiduously with other islands in the region to bring back crews. In fact, Prime Minister Mia Motley is part of a task force, and I am a part of that task force, designed to work out protocols to look at the bringing back of crews. I must say, however, that as of today, the CDC has advised the United States travelers not to take cruises. And also in July, the UK Foreign Office, Overseas Office, advised UK nationals not to take cruises also. So really, the, 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 the practical answer is that as far as we're concerned, cruise is really a bit at the moment on the back burner. So our position is to work out the matters of stayovers at the moment, and then we can focus on cruises after. We don't foresee cruises coming back before 2021 for practical purposes. What I can say, however, is that you may find one or two of the smaller vessels coming back much earlier than the larger ones, and that's for all practical purposes. But I think our effort now is to put our time, our energy, and our resources to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's in terms of the stillover visitors that are to come. We make sure that from October 31st, as we welcome our international travelers, we make sure that we have that really under control, and then we could you know, put our resources and our energies into cruise. But practically speaking, I think we are looking at 2021 for crews coming back into Port Zante. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. There are three questions directed at uh, uh, Prime Minister Harris. The first one, Dr. Harris, please explain why you guys keep on saying St. Kitts and Nevis and the Nevis guys keep on saying Nevis. That sounds strange. Thank you. The second question, what are the government interventions aimed at ensuring that tour operators and others who directly rely on tourism for employment are insulated from the shocks associated with COVID, with the COVID-19 pandemic? And the last question for the Honorable Prime Minister, good evening. What if passengers cannot afford to pay to be quarantined or to pay for the COVID test? What would be the end results? Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, thank you, Val. We refer to St. Kitts and Nevis because we are a federal government with responsibilities for two islands, the island of Nevis and the island of St. Kitts. On the other hand, the Nevis Island Administration has responsibility for certain matters as they relate to the administration on the island of Nevis. I think section 104 of the constitution sets out those matters over which the Nevis Island administration has full responsibility for the management of the affairs on Nevis. As a prime minister, I am the prime minister for the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And so when we speak, we speak to all the people within the federation. Similarly, Minister Grant is the Federal Minister of Tourism, and when he speaks or he goes and he promotes the destination, he promotes the destination of St. Kitts and Nevis. It's one of the live reality of our constitutional um, framework with two governments. One has general responsibility for the administration and the management of the country the country is made up of two islands. And then we had what we will call the Nevis Island Administration, or a localized government which has responsibilities specific 
to the island of Nevis. Um, the other question put with respect to support for tour operators and others who directly rely on tourism for employment. We certainly, as part of our $120 million stimulus package, made provision to bring an ease to all persons in St. Kitts and Nevis, whether or not they were involved in tourism. Those who were involved in tourism in particular would have benefited from the $1,000 monthly stipend that was paid by Social Security for a period of about four months. Three months, April, May, and June, and then again in September. And particularly in September, most of the persons who would have benefited would have been those displaced as a result of the closure of the tourism um, sector. Beyond the specific targeted benefit to that sector, we must bear in mind that we gave a waiver and water bills for six months for those who would have lost their jobs or otherwise lost income due to COVID-19. Tour operators would have fallen in that category. In order to benefit, you'd have to apply, show evidence that you are a victim of COVID and the support would have been provided. Additionally, electricity bills, we put a moratorium, that is a freeze, a hold on them for a six month period to give all persons, consumers of Skellig some ease on their cash flow. Further, through our involvement at the level of the Monetary Council of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, we provided in the first instance a six month freeze moratorium, call it by some other synonym, on the payment of mortgages. So any tour operator who had a mortgage could have applied for that facility. Recently, the Monetary Council gave support to the recommendation of the Central Bank to extend that moratorium for a further 12 month period so that persons now can apply to their particular financial institution for consideration and a postponement, postponement of interest and principal for 12 months, taking them all the way down to next year, September. We couldn't ask for better in the context of the reality. Additionally, there were a number of persons involved in the tourism industry, taxi operators, braiders, and so on, who were not contributing to the Social Security scheme. When we originally budgeted for support from Social Security, it was intended that only those who would have contributed would have benefited. Because this is a crisis, and because we are a compassionate government, and because we had been listening to their cries, and we know that they were vulnerable, we took the decision to expand it and gave taxi operators here, braiders, those who were involved in the provision of massage services, etc., those who were involved in the restaurants, an opportunity, although they would not have contributed to the self-employment fund, gave them an opportunity to benefit equally as others from the $1,000 stimulus. We have said and we have executed this, that those also whose income, whose incomes were below the 3,000 threshold could have applied to the government poverty alleviation program for support of $500. The sum then is that there were a variety of elements of our stimulus package which would have benefited persons in St. Kitts and Nevis in a variety of ways. Water, electricity, stimulus, pop, 
a fees on the payment of your, your mortgages, and we could go on and on as we look to the critical elements of the stimulus. So in a variety of ways, we have assisted all people, and certainly if there were other recommendations that we could consider, we are open to consider those. What happens if passengers cannot afford to pay to be quarantined or to pay the COVID tests? What would the end results be? And why are payments in US? Where payments are quoted in US, it is what is quoted by the service provider. So if OTI Hotel says 500 US for 14 days, which amounts to just about 35 US dollars and some cents per day, then that is the rate we will quote because that is what the service provider is saying you will have to pay to use its facility. Similarly, all of the charges as far as I'm aware we are applicable would be in the currency of the country unless the service provider designates it in US. The security cost, as far as I'm aware, is in EC, because again, we are an EC country, and the quotation that had come would have come in EC, 20 EC per hour. I think those were the questions. Did I leave any? Thank you very much. There were a number of questions directed at the chief medical officer, uh, several. I will turn to the chief medical officer to respond. Okay, Valencia. Uh, there's one question. I read, good night. If two people staying in a room, do they both have to pay $500? So if you are staying at the Ocean Terrace Inn, the fee is US $500 per room. So if there are two persons in the room, the fee remains 500 US for, uh, for the room, uh, for the duration of time. Uh, the other question, uh, for residents of St. Kitts and Nevis, please indicate where one can ascertain the PCR test, if it's done locally, and is it free? Okay, if you're a resident of St. Kitts and Nevis, you can ascertain the PCR test at Next Generation Lab. Uh, no, it's not free. Uh, the cost is uh, 100 US or 270 EC dollars. Uh, the other question, if you are a person, good night, is it possible for a person to travel to St. Kitts on the 7th of November if they already purchased their ticket but only getting back their result or test on the same day? All right, so we advise that the test, the PCR test, should be taken three days prior to your travel. So perchance, if you're traveling to St. Kitts on a Saturday, we advise by the Wednesday, try and get the test sample taken so that you would get the result by Thursday or Friday ahead of travel on Saturday. The other question, only if a person is coming from a Caribbean country, without any active cases and the negative test result, is there any discretion to be exercised regarding whether that person was quarantined or not? Okay, so if uh, an inbound traveler is coming from any of the uh, Caribbean bubble territories, uh, once their PCR test is negative, once they're without symptoms, they are free to integrate into the society without quarantine. However, if you are coming from a Caribbean territory outside of uh, the, 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 the bubble, uh, you will have to uh, vacation in place or quarantine. And so let me just highlight again the bubble territories, Anguilla, Montserrat, Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, St. Lucia, Antigua. So if you're coming from these islands and your test is negative and you do not have any symptoms, uh, you will be free to integrate. Uh, the last question, 
Returning nationals are unclear of the charges for persons choosing to quarantine at their homes is US or EC. So it's EC, uh, about $6,720. Consideration should be given to a reduction in this cost. And yes, uh, there's ongoing discussion regarding consideration of a more affordable rate in this regard. Uh, was consideration given for wearing an electronic bracelet instead of using security officers? We are looking into this. And then it goes on to say some persons are not comfortable with security persons at their homes 24 hours per day. God's continued blessings. So I think I would have covered all the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Medical Officer. We'll now go to closing remarks. It's uh, close to 25 past the hour of 10 o'clock. I'll turn to the Chief Immigration Officer to give brief closing remarks. Okay, thank you again. I would like to, to say thank you to my support staff who are here with me tonight, my deputy and my, my supervisor, Sheldon Jeffers. I want to thank them for the, the service that they've been rendering to the department. We've been going since January until now, and we have no intentions of stopping unless the Lord do stop us. So we have a lot of new technology and a lot of new initiatives that are taking place, and um, I want to thank the entire immigration department. Um, we are as vulnerable sometimes as, as um, other frontline officers because over the period we've had um, several officers who were in quarantine as they came in contact with, with, um, with some persons. So it shows that we're all vulnerable to this, this, um, this pandemic. And so I would want to encourage the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis to take this matter seriously. As we reopen our borders, the challenges will present themselves. We know that persons will be coming, as we've heard all night, from hot spots. And so we cannot take this virus lightly. Um, but if we wear our mask and we practice social, social and physical distancing and we sanitize, we can assure ourselves some, some measure of safety. And so we must look out for each other. We want to continue to encourage us to, to, to be our brother's keeper and look at helping to secure our borders because we know that um, they, they, they're boats that will be trying to, to come in to the country and um, we don't want anyone coming through any open borders. I mean, uh, now that the borders will be open, coming through illegally. So let us help each other and um, it's an exciting time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Immigration Officer. I'll turn to the Honorable Minister of Tourism, Transport and Ports, the Honorable Lindsey Grant, to give brief op closing remarks. Thank you, uh, Valencia. I just would say it's been an, an honor to be here this evening on Leadership Matters. And I would close where I, I began just by reminding us that the COVID-19 is a, a deadly virus and we must take every precaution necessary to ensure that we remain safe and COVID free following all the protocols that we have been advised to do. And so I say, let us be safe come October 31st and beyond and keep St. Kitts and Nevis free of the COVID. Thank you. <clears throat> much, Honorable Minister. I'll squeeze in one last WhatsApp question that came in from Bucky Got It Media. How would passengers be handled or dealt with for failure to wear their masks? I'll invite either, well, and, uh, well, both the Honorable Prime Minister and the Chief Medical Officer to address that and to give closing remarks. I'll turn to the Chief Medical Officer first to deliver her closing remarks. All right, so regarding the question, Valencia, uh, if you fail to wear your mask, uh, the emergency powers regulations uh, that are in vogue uh, highlights the consequences. I think there is a charge 
uh, a fine for not wearing your mask. In terms of my closing remarks, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare to open our borders, I want to remind us that we have an individual and collective responsibility to prevent the spread of this virus. I want us to be serious about this responsibility and adhere to the measures that we recommend. Make sure that you wear your face mask when out in, pu in public spaces and we want you to keep your hands clean and out of your face, nose and mouth and avoid crowds. I also want to invite you to tune in to the special edition of the NIOC press brief tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Medical Officer. I'll turn to the Honorable Prime Minister to deliver his closing remarks. Thank you very much, and let me continue the tradition of thank you and to say thank you, Val, for presiding over another informative edition of Leadership Matters and to commend you for your excellent, uh, well, presiding over <laughs> this particular event. I was going to say chairmanship, which is also good. Um, I want to thank the, the panelists who agreed to come forward in this program to help us better educate and inform the residents of St. Kitts and Nevis and those abroad who are wanting to travel to St. Kitts and Nevis about our readiness and to give very pertinent information. I say thank you in particular to the head of our immigration services, Mrs. Seuss, for her work, for her commitment to service. She's also a member of the National Task Force on COVID-19. And clearly the Immigration Department is front and center of this effort at reopening. I want to wish all the, those involved in the provision of services at our Immigration Department the very best and ask them to lead by example the wearing of the masks, the practicing of the protocols, which we are encouraging all. You do that for your own good, and you do that for the benefit of your loved ones. Again, I want equally to say thank you to the Chief Medical Officer, who has been hard at work even before COVID-19 came our way on the last week of March 2020, doing the study, doing the analysis, doing the public education of the health sector and beyond the health sector, the general public way in advance. She has been at this for over, um, well, nine months now, 10 months, we are getting into November. So I want to commend her and the fantastic team of professional healthcare providers that have kept the country informed and in tune to what is happening and provided the necessary inputs on the development of the protocols that has kept us um, safe. We have, when all is said and done, some very excellent civil servants and we want to commend them whenever we find them and certainly in Dr. Laws and Mrs. Hughes, we have, had, we have two of the very best and we add Valencia to that pool, <laughs> who never say no, who never say no, we never call upon to serve this country, a country which they must love passionately and all of us should do. I want to thank Minister Grant for agreeing to come to this forum tonight to again share more information about arrivals, about the work with the taxi operators and his own ministry's outreach to get and to ensure that as many of the stakeholders in the sector are ready to welcome other people to St. Kitts and Nevis and to do so safely. And to reinforce the commitment of the government to help everyone to help themselves, 
But you have to show interest. You have to make wise decisions. You have to appreciate that times have changed. And if you do not change, you will be left behind. We will not compromise on the safety and the requirements that are being imposed. I want to encourage you to gladly embrace them. Those who embrace them will be the first to benefit from the reopening of the sector. And the earlier you can participate, more practice you get, better you are at it. And if you leave our guests satisfied, they will certainly have a wonderful experience and they would want to come back to you. To all who have called in, I want to say thank you. And I know many tried and did not get through given the limits of time and technology. And maybe ZIZ would someday get more lines so that more can, can have the opportunity to get in. I want though, having mentioned ZIZ, to thank them and to thank its chairman, Mr. Lester Hanley, for a fine job. And all the staff who week after week give us excellent coverage and give us a quality program second to none anywhere in the world. We want to commend you for your work and your commitment to duty. We hope as a result of the fine work that ZIZ is doing, it will have more sponsors of its program and it will be able to do more for the workers who do their very best to make our national radio station the best radio station in the region. For me, it's always been an honor and a privilege to be able to interact with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis where they are at, to hear their concerns and to attempt to adjust them. Going forward, I promise to do what I've always committed to do, my very best for this country and for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, who I love with all my heart. So thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for your interest in our country. Let us do the very best we can to advance St. Kitts and Nevis to the stronger and safer future. Thank you. May God bless you and may keep our people and our country safe. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. I'd like to thank you for spending another Tuesday night with us. See you next week. As we get ready to serve, it is important that we improve our vehicles to ensure the safety of our guests and ourselves. Outfit your vehicle with appropriate dividers to separate driver from passenger. Plexiglass or Velcro plastic divider may be used. Have a minimum of two hand sanitizers, one for you and one for your guests.